Hi everyone, my name is Norma and I'm a volunteer in the microbes exhibit at the museum. Today I want to show you an interesting part of our exhibit, the Winogradsky column. This giant Winogradsky column was hand built by Scott Chmielewski, a microbiologist and former postdoctoral fellow at Harvard Medical School. The original Winogradsky column was invented by Sergei Winogradsky in the 1880s as a device for culturing a large diversity of microbes. Microbes are tiny living things found all around us that are too small to see with the naked eye. They can include anything from bacteria and archaea to fungi and some multicellular organisms. Winogradsky wanted to understand the relationships among microbes. How do they live and work together? Do they help one another, working together to provide nutrients so each species can survive and thrive? Or do they compete for essential nutrients and territories at the expense of other species? To make our Winograsky column, Scott Chmielewski took a mixture of mud and water from the side of a marsh, mixed it well, transferred it to a glass column, covered it tightly and put it in a sunny spot. Over time, the microbes in the column have migrated to the positions best suited to meet their individual needs. The aerobic organisms, algae and cyanobacteria that produce and require oxygen will concentrate near the top where most of the oxygen has accumulated. Microbes that don't like oxygen, anaerobic bacteria like Clostridia will be further down the column. Unlike most of the other microbes in the Winograsky column, these clostridia can cause serious diseases in humans. Photosynthetic microbes that require light will concentrate closer to the light source, the outer surface of the column. We can easily see them because of their green pigment. Closer to the bottom will be areas of darker green, purple, or black from anaerobic bacteria that use or make sulfur. Sulfur is present naturally in mud, and these bacteria concentrated. The fact that these columns can thrive for many years tells us the answer to Winograsky's question. Microbes live and work together to provide nutrients for one another. They all fit in different niches within the column. If the microbes were competing with one another, we might expect one species to dominate the entire column. Instead, here at the bottom, we have bacteria that make sulfur and other bacteria that eat it. We have microbes that make carbon and others that eat it. At the top, we have microbes that make oxygen and microbes that need oxygen. So microbes from one region recycle nutrients from microbes in another, and together they can all survive. This column is a good representation of life on Earth when only microbes were present. It shows us how life survived with only carbon and an energy source like the sun. A single Winogradsky column provides all the strategies needed for life, but a Winogradsky column might not be the only system where organisms form communities and work together. Can you think of others? <laughs>